Okay, so this video is going to be really nice and short. Uh, I went ahead and reconstructed the original Johnson's paper uh, on fast neural style transfer. So it's a CNN based approach as opposed to the uh, Gatiss's approach, uh, which was optimization based. Let's see some results I got using the four pre trained models I trained uh, beforehand. So in the left column, you can see the style images uh, I used, and uh, on the right, you can see the output from the models I trained. So keep in mind that the, the, the model in the top row is the only one that was fully trained. So it's all like it did two epochs of uh, the whole MS Coco data set. So that's around 83,000 images. Whereas the three bottom ones uh, still need to be additionally trained. Now I'm just going to do a quick uh, time lapse of the setup because we already did that in the previous coding video. Once you have your Conda environment configured, there are only two more steps to get some results. So the first one is go ahead and run this uh, resource downloader script. And it will just go ahead and download the pre-trained models that I've uploaded right here to this uh, URL on Dropbox. It will then unzip them and place them in this folder here, models binaries so you'll have four pre-trained models on your disposal and the second step is just go ahead and run this stylization script it's located here just run it with the default parameters and we'll get some results this is the result we get using the default content image that's located here just go to data content images and this one is used by default so now i'm just going to go and show you a little bit about how the stylization script itself works I'm going to go ahead and stop this one here. <clears throat> Oops. And I'm just going to show you where it's actually saved. It's saved to the output images directory here. So you can be able, you'll be able to find it later on uh, in this directory. Okay, let's see how the script works. Let me close this one and zoom this in a little bit like this. So what we have here is a couple of default locations. Uh, first one is for content images. Uh, and we already saw that one that's in here. We have output images where the images will get dumped. Uh, binaries uh, where we have our uh, models. And this is just basic error checking here. Basically checking if uh, if we only have PyTorch models inside of the of this uh, binaries uh, here directory. And I just create the output uh, directory where we'll dump images. And here are the arguments. Those are just the content image that you want to uh, use, that you want to pass through the, the model. Uh, then we have the, uh, you want to set the width of the output image and it's set to 500 by default here. Uh, we have default uh, model uh, that's called mosaic. And uh, we just wrap all of those parameters and we call the stylized static image function. Let's see what this function actually does. So if we go upside here, uh, we can first see, we first want to check out if the device has uh, GPU or only CPU support. And then we basically just uh, create this image path. We pass it through this uh, function called prepare image, which will kind of add a, a batch dimension and do some normalization. We'll check that uh, function a bit later. And I just instantiate here the transfor uh, transformer model which is the actual model that performs the stylization. We figure out uh, the state. So we just uh, load the state from a PyTorch uh, model that's in binaries here. We print some metadata and we finally load the weights inside of the, the model. And we just put it into this evolve mode, which is really important if you wanna do inference uh, you want to do this, you want to call this function here. And finally, we just wrap this into this uh, context uh, torch no grad, which will basically uh, forbid uh, PyTorch to calculate gradients, uh, which will, which would kind of be a huge memory overhead. So we call the model on the content image. We just uh, paste it to CPU. We convert it to NumPy here. And because we had the batch dimension that we previously added, we got to extract the zeroth uh, uh, batch here. And that's the stylized image and we just saved the image. That's the image that we saw a couple of minutes ago. 
uh, that was dumped here into output uh, images folder, this one. Let's just check out that prepare image we saw in the utils here. So this is how it looks like. It basically just uh, loads the image from the specified path, specified by this variable image path. And that will just basically create a NumPy uh, image uh, normalized to 0 to 1 range. And then we'll uh, pretty much add the, this normalization transform uh, that PyTorch provides us with. And we'll use uh, ImageNet's uh, mean and standard deviation to normalize our images. Uh, after we apply the transformation here, we just uh, push the push the this uh, this image onto the uh, GPU if we have one, and we just add this patch dimension in front because that's that's uh, because models are ex always expecting uh, this this patch dimension. So pretty pretty simple stuff. Uh, in the next video, I'll I'll cover training. That's that'll be a bit more. Uh, challenging. We're gonna figure out how to use TensorBoard and just debug and visualize our our training uh, metrics. So let me just go ahead and uh, try one more image here. So I'm gonna use a uh, image called Figures, and let me set the width here to 350. Say we'll use the same model mosaic. And if I start that one, if I run it, this is what we get. So how good the output image will be actually depends also on the size that you put here in the width. So if I put 550, say here, and I run that one, uh, it will have different uh, stylization. And it's much nicer if you ask me. In the next video, we'll cover training. Uh, until uh, that time, just go ahead and play with this uh, repo. Try and figure out how the things work and that'll be a really nice learning experience. If you like the content, uh, go ahead and subscribe, uh, like, and share the videos uh, if you think they can bring value to somebody else. See you next time.